first, Haley, tell us um, about where you're from and maybe a little bit about your hometown. So I'm from Temecula, California. It's total wine country, kind of where uh, the freestyle motocross industry started with my dad. It's kind of like the racing paradise, I would say, of the two-wheel motorsports. So you mentioned your father, who is one of the most decorated X Games athletes in his run, what, rallycross, freestyle, I don't know, you know, yeah. obviously. Um, what was it like growing up at the racetrack and around that? I, th I thought it was the normal. I thought like, okay, my friends that were at the racetrack too, I'm like, this is just like the everyday kid thing. But then like getting older, I was like, dang, this is not, <laughs> I'm like, this is different. <laughs> but I think that like my whole life was just racing and that's what I was used to. I'd go down below with my dad and all his freestyle buddies and just hang out and yeah. hang out with their daughters. And like, it was just the everyday thing. When was, let's say your earliest memory of wanting to race something? I would say when my dad made the transition in, I think it was 2009, because I was eight years old, or turning eight, so it was 2008, and I saw these little kids. They were eight to 16 racing carts, and I was seven at the time. I remember just like being at the fence, like, Dad, I want to race, I want to get a truck, and he was like, eh, and I just kept begging, like, I'm still to this day one person, I keep asking and asking and asking for something, and like, and they ended up getting me a truck for my eighth birthday, and like, ever since then, I was like, I, I'm not letting this go. <laughs> So talk about when you first got into racing these trucks. Um, how much horsepower, what were they like? I mean, you're only seven or eight years uh -huh. old. What were those trucks like? I remember my first race, I, first race, I didn't know my difference from right and left. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> I remember going backwards on the track my first race. That's something like still in my head. I can sit in like the seat of the car and remember that. And other than that though, we just kept getting better and better, kept racing uh, with my dad every weekend that he raced. And next thing you know, we were started winning. We were the person to beat, winning championships. And ever since then, it's just been escalating. What was it like to be the first woman to win a Lucas Oil Off-Road Championship? And again, I think you were pretty young mm -hmm. when that happened. Just racing against all the guys, they were all my buddies. Like we'd go, we'd hang out after, we'd hang out at the track all the time. And like, we were all so competitive, but I never was like, it's so cool being the first girl. Like, yeah. da -da -da. And I was like, I was always like, we were out there trying to kill each other on the track type thing. And it was just always so aggressive. We were, we were all just such aggressive drivers. And, but we never saw, they never treated me different. I mean, there was a couple of parents that did, like a couple of parents were <laughs> like, don't let the girl beat you. Like my dad would hear on the radio. But other than that, it was just, it was a normal for me. How did the, the transition to pavement, was it always something in the back of your mind or did an opportunity come about? It's really funny because I started racing bandoleros when I was nine years old. I did two bandoleros. I did one on the Vegas road course and one on the Vegas circle track. I did that for a little bit, stopped, and I was like never really touched it again until I was like 15 just because I was focused on off-road and I was doing really good in off-road racing and my dad really wasn't in the stock car scene at that time. Yeah. But then I kind of came back to it racing legend cars. It's funny because I tested another guy who races Xfinity now. I raced his legend car uh, the first couple races. So it's just crazy seeing how it like, kind of wrapped back around and ever since then did some late model stuff, super lates, and now K&N.